It's magic time. It's Mind Pump, the best fitness podcast you'll find anywhere in the world, including here on YouTube. Okay, we're going to do another giveaway. You know we do this every single time. Did you expect anything less? Of course not. All right, so today's giveaway is MAPS HIT. That's High Intensity Interval Training. It's a program where you do HIT the right way, not the stupid way like everybody else, but the right way. So here's how you can win free access to MAPS HIT. So in this episode, we talk about vacation workouts. In the comments below, talk about what you like to do on your vacations to stay in shape. Tell us a story. Make it entertaining. If we pick you, if we pick your comment, uh, then you'll win a free program. By the way, this has to happen in the first 24 hours that we drop this podcast. Also, subscribe to this channel. One more thing, turn on your notifications. Also, before the podcast starts, I'm going to tell you about our big sale that we're doing this month. Maps Hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula, both 50% off. You heard me right. Half off. Are we crazy? Maybe, but it's good for you, right? Go check those out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right. Enjoy this podcast. I see that. Uh, I, I don't know about you or right. so much you, but I know you didn't miss any workouts. Huh? Oh, you oh mean, I thought you were talking about my tan. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, come on, man. No, you got a little color going on over there. He I like it. Tiny yeah, bit. No, no, I like it. He yeah. does. But uh, I, I definitely did not see too much in your stories about lifting weights, but I did see this guy. Uh, uh, I love vacation know, workouts. No, I did, in, but in, yeah, he in definitely was His after. regular form of wife beater even in oh, Hawaii yeah. and working out and flexing in the mirrors. Oh, yeah. I got to do that. No, you know, you know what I like about vacation workouts is uh, they're different because I'm not in my normal routine, and I don't work out the same. So mm -hmm. when I do vacation workouts, I'll do full body every day for 30 minutes. That's it. So I go in there, I touch a little everything, get a little pump, and then go straight from there to the pool. So you're just ready to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are that, that guy. Is the move, it is pump. Just it, walk right uh, to the pool. Makes so much sense. For I'm sure. ready to go. Yeah. No, I think that if you do that daily, like 30 minute, just get a little. Now, were you guys all at the pool and stuff together? So did you, where did yeah. you be out of the pool and you see this guy walk in with oh, a pump? Oh yeah, he's coming uh, out like. Vein out of his shoulder Adonis, and stuff you know, like that. Just, like it's all natural. Hey. Like he just woke up. Oh dude. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I, I mean, I pulled that trick a few times. Or, I, maybe like every other day. Yeah. We would work out first thing in the morning and then, yeah, load up. Up and then you look pretty, you know, puffed out around the pool. Dude, so you did train. You trained. I did. Yeah. Oak every day or every how? other day. Oh wow. Yeah. Dude, I tell you, if you do like a third, like a twenty or thirty minute kind of full body, if you because usually if you go on vacation, you're not going to have a power cage. You're not going to have typically barbells. You'll have either dumbbells and then some machines. Yeah. So you just do like a 20, 30 minute, get a little pump. That's it. Every mm. single just start off your day that way. It's really cool. But it's funny. The first day we were there. Right, we get there, and Justin had gotten there the day before. So him and his family were there the day before. Mm -hmm. So when we get there, they're already in the full swing of things. So we show up, <laughs> yeah, right? So we go right. up to our room, we do that's our thing, right. check, you know, get our our bathing suits on, walk out to the pool area, and I'm like, I can't find them, and I hear Courtney yell from across the pool, "Hey, what's up, ah, guys? Oh so my!" I'm like, oh, yeah. you guys are already yeah. rolling over yeah. there. Oh, they were I had been hard. feeding her drinks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't waste no day. time then, huh? I didn't waste no time. I, I got a little too excited in terms of like, hey, you know, we're on vacation. Like, it's uh, no holds bar. Um, and so, yeah, I'm guilty. I got her a bit sick that night. Oh, wow. Like oh, that. yeah, that day. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, so I made friends right away with the bartender, which is what I do. <laughs> Uh, because I'm it's a like, great strategy. yeah, I'm always trying to kind of squeeze whatever I can out of uh, the situation. And so uh, we hit it off and she was like, you know, real friendly and was decided to go heavy handed every time. And I, I was getting like doubles of some of these like Mai Tais. And so Courtney didn't realize they were doubles and was, you know, trying to keep up with me. And I didn't realize I'm like, yeah, I'm a hundred pounds heavier than her and <laughs> should have done the math there. Uh, so yeah, she totally was uh you know three sheets of the wind oh dude she, they were they were they were part did she get like throw up sick i mean yeah the, the towards the end of the night yeah she's oh wow she had a hard time yeah what, what, that, so we were going and they were having a great yeah, everybody's bad. having a great it was time bad. yeah everybody's having a good time by the way it was uh so mai tais right that's like the hawaii drink yeah but then there was a drink called the tai chi that's which is a mai tai just double the alcohol just doubled so that's what they were ordering the whole time. Yeah. Tai yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're there. We're hanging out. Everybody's having a good time. They're partying. And Courtney's just having a blast. And she's a she's a really fun, you know, she some people get drunk, they act obnoxious. There was nothing obnoxious, just having a good time. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, I see her at the pool 
and she's got the hat, like you know, doing this thing, and she's kind of she's, hunched she's over. She just started hiding. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I looked at Justin. I'm like, she okay, dude? And he yeah. goes. I don't know, bro. I don't think so. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. I know. He's like, I, I went done? too far, damn it. Yeah. I thought I was going to get some tonight. Now I'm going to be holding hair, hold hair back the whole night. I, went See, up, I got so excited. I'm like, oh, my God. She's going to be so fun. And like, yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> no, you missed your window. Dude. I completely missed the it. The window was like an hour before that. After yeah. that, there was nothing. I'm no, sure. that, then after that, then it's just trying to get her back to life. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I it was saw real. you guys took the uh, the ATVs out, too, right? You guys went and did that? Dude, that was a blast. So that was Doug. That was Doug. Um, and Bree and me and my two kids. Oh, okay. Did you didn't that. go. No, we did something different. So we took a one of these raft boats out. That's like a, one of those rubber uh, type of uh, boats that is real bouncy and that goes super fast. So that was crazy. It was really fun. You get to see the whole Nepali coast that way and go through the caves and you know the exclusive beaches and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it was it was like hard. Because you have to you have to hold on to this rope, and if you're in the front, like the front end, like bounces a lot off the waves. So they were like launching off these waves, and oh, really? made it like super fun. It was like um, like a roller coaster, you know, <laughs> like you're going through along the coast. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't ready for that, and like my pinky got all tore up and everything. I'm like, oh my god. Now, did you crazy. guys? Uh, was it rare that you guys did stuff all together? Or did you guys all kind of go off and do your own thing? Or were you together most I'd of the time? Probably half and half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Probably something like that. I'll tell you what, though, if you're going to go on vacation with the Andrews family, don't do a hike with them because they always. <laughs> this is like the third time now. Yeah, it is. They go hard, bro, on the hikes. Like, we, did we just go? So we went. We we all did. I'm like, let's go see Waimea Canyon. So Waimea Canyon in Kauai is they call it the what do they call it the, the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, right? Be- yeah, beautiful, right? Okay. So it's like this huge. I don't know what you would call it. It's like a, it's a canyon. And so we're driving up there, and then we get to the place we want to go to, and there's different hikes you can take. And so, you know, I don't know if it was Courtney or Justin, like, let's take this one. So I'm like, I forgot that you don't want to go on a hike with them. So I'm like, sure, let's do this one. <laughs> bro, you take the lead. Bro, it was six miles. Yeah. It right. was a six-mile hike, and it was treacherous. It wasn't like a trail. Bro, you're like climbing down muddy, like, hills and climbing over boulders and rocks. Big cardio guy. Big bro, cardio guy. I'm oh, like, dude. I'm like, for reals, dude, are we really, you know? <laughs> but you got to get happening? the reward at the end to go see the waterfall. Otherwise, what's it all for, right? So we had to keep going is the point. That's why it extended and it kept going longer and longer. I'm like, where is this waterfall? Uh, everybody was a trooper, but my, my daughter, she was doing great. It was on the way back. She's like, her uh, face is like ready super, to be done. oh, her face Poor was thing. super red. <laughs> she, she was overheating. Yeah. I can't. I don't know if I can make it. Dude, I'm like, you're going to have to. Everybody, everybody was it. wiped out from yeah. this. Well, I imagine. I mean, a six-mile hike uphill like that. So six-mile total or six-mile? Total. total. Oh, okay, so three there, three back, yeah. which is still a good hike. Well, yeah. I mean, remember, it's humid. You're in you Well, know, and I'm also thinking, I'm thinking of the kids, right? I expect you to be able to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. But it was a little, I mean, it was, there were definitely some areas where you're like <laughs> Got worried you about falling yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. And you know me. I'm not like Mr. I'm not Spider-Man like Justin. <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man. So I'm like a little worried. Yeah. So we did that, which was- The mountain goat. That was super. I highly recommend doing that if you've never done that and you go to Kauai. By the way, Kauai is my favorite island um, in Hawaii by far. It's just, oh, yeah. I've been to Maui. So I've been beautiful. to the big yeah. island. But Kauai is like adventure. It's nature. It's obviously a lot slower. It's smaller. Yeah. It's just great. And then the ATV tour was a blast. So that that one, uh, Justin and his family, they did the. So we're doing that so next time for sure. Out of the three of you, uh, who's most likely to do a nothing day, and who's most likely to have every day planned out what they're doing? And like, I think it's probably pretty equal. I mean, I, I, I like half and half. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's you want to do days of nothing. Yeah. But then there's adventure. But you don't want to do adventure every day because you'll be exhausted. No. And then you need a vacation after. Yeah, vacation. we definitely did nothing after that hike. Yes. yes. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're gonna chill today. But the ATVs, it was raining while we were doing it, and it was hella muddy. And Doug, so Doug and and Bree were behind us in their ATV, and every once in a while they would stop, and then they'd have us go, and I'd wait for the guy in front of me to go a little bit so I could gun it and kick mud up it. <laughs> Doug, <dude. laughs> I knew you were doing that. I, I knew you. <laughs> yeah. Where's this mud coming from? Uh, Sal! And I'd, I'd, you know, I'd go squirrely in the thing or whatever. Now was this Bree's <laughs> first time? ATV? It, no, no, first time in Hawaii. Oh, no, she's been to Hawaii a couple times. Before. Oh, she has yeah. already. Okay. Was there any of the kids first time or they had my they, kids? 
There yeah. it was their first time. They've never been there before. Yours yeah, too, mine or? too. So, uh, well, uh, Ethan was there before, but he was like an infant, so it didn't really count. But yeah, they, this is the first time that they actually like were, you know, aware that where they were. Yeah, I'll so. tell you what though, um, island time is a real thing. <laughs> oh That's, yeah, it's real. Yeah. Like you come from the Bay Area, which this is, you know, the hub of tech for right. the country, maybe the world. Yeah. Lots Speed, of people. efficiency, yeah. you know, productivity. Everybody's like, yeah. move, move, move. Why is the yeah. opposite? Oh, dude, no, no, they no. don't care, bro. They're <laughs> just chilling, yeah. taking their. At first, you're annoyed. You're like, come yeah, on. nine o'clock means sometime within nine. Oh, bro. <laughs> it could be <laughs> 9 57. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, found, I found myself, it's funny. So, like, you know, I'm waiting in line for something, right? I'm in paradise. It's gorgeous, right? Yeah. I'm waiting in line and I'm annoyed. That the person at the front is talking to every single person they're checking in or whatever, taking their time. You check yourself, and then I'm like, "Wait a minute! Yeah. Like, I, I'm I'm rushing so that I could do nothing later. I can do nothing now. Look totally. around, you know. So after about three days, then you start to settle into. You just have to factor it in. Yeah, you know, you just got to figure that out. But in terms of like also the time difference there too, it took yeah. me. I'm glad I had like the weekend to before I got back to work oh. here because I was like still just like off completely like my sleep so oh, three yeah. hours yeah so three hour difference yeah, yeah. i was waking which up which was with, nice i was waking up at 4 a.m every morning over there yeah oh, wow, without really? yeah just automatically so were you training early in the morning is that when you were getting your lift in no i would wait till about six or seven so i just stay in my room and watch tv hang out oh wow and let my kids you know hang out or whatever um, but then i got home right so you're talking about settling in check out this shit show right so Come home. I get back. It's like ten thirty when we finally make it back from. The well, airport. while you were in Hawaii, your wife was moving your house, right? She was. So, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know how you. you I don't know how you. Ultimate I have no right idea here. how you pulled that one. It that wasn't was planned. Amazing. No, it wasn't planned. We, we actually had planned on everybody going together. Yeah, and you're and, still married, right? Yeah. No, okay. Yeah, barely. That's no, amazing. <laughs> no, we're still wearing the rings. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. we planned on everybody going, and then because we were having all those challenges with the baby yeah, and yeah. sleep and all that stuff. And then Jessica was looking at the schedule. I'm You're like, like oh, I'm gonna we'll throw a move on top of that too. Let's well, see. How, let's see how savage she really well, is. Well, no, the move didn't. The move wasn't even in the picture. Yeah. Remember when we booked all this? We weren't even didn't know we were gonna move. Yeah. Then that's when our landlord's like, "You guys got to be out at this time." Looks like I'm gonna try and sell the house. So, and this is already after Jessica said she wasn't gonna go because the baby's sleep and stuff. She's like, yeah. "You know what? I'll just stay out." So it wasn't like <laughs> it wasn't like, "Hey, babe." You know the move. You do that. I'll, <laughs> I'll go to Hawaii. I'll go to Hawaii. Yeah, but anyway, no. I we, know it looks like that, but yeah. that's not really what was going yeah. on. No, but we, you know, we ha we hired movers. My parents helped. Her parents uh, came and helped. So she had a lot of help. But still, it's moving and it's still chaotic. And yeah. you know, it's a pain in the ass. But anyway, we get back right ten thirty at night. I'm like, okay, I'm home. I'm excited. I haven't seen my wife uh, for a week. I'm excited to see her. Excited to see the baby. Right. So we pull up in the Uber. And she's walking out, which it's it's ten thirty. I'm I was expecting her to be either in bed or I don't know. So she's walking out, and she's got this look on her face of like terror. I'm like, what is going on? So she comes out. I open the door, and she goes, "I'm trying not to freak out right now." I'm like, "What happened?" So it's a new place, right? New house. Yeah. She the door to the garage locks. So the door closes on its own. It locks. So baby's in bed upstairs. Oh, she's locked out. She's locked she walked out, out to greet us, locked us out of the house. So the baby's in the house. <laughs> oh, locked out. Oh no. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, what? So I, I'm like, okay, let's let's see what's going on. Let's stay calm, which didn't last very long because now I'm like <laughs> You're grabbing a rock. Yeah. Like, ah. yeah. So I'm like calling the landlord, like, hey, do you have you know, but they're not answering because it's 10 30 at night. Right, right. I'm like, do, who, do we go to the neighbors? Like, what do we do? Going around the house trying to figure, I'm like, I'm going to have to break a fucking window. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? Definitely not going to let my kids, like, especially if she had the monitor with her. Yeah. Thank God the baby didn't wake up. If right. If he started crying. Then you would have done uh, something she would have, drastic. Dude, uh, she would have juggernauted through the wall herself. Yeah. Yeah. My wife. So I'm like, oh my God, what do we do? Luckily, the front door, because they had been moving. So you know how the front, like your front door has two doors, right? Oh, uh -huh. the bottom wasn't wedged in. So you know how the, the bottom and top on yeah. one has to be wedged. They left the top one. Not in, so it was still wedged, but I, I there was enough give where I thought maybe if I push hard enough, I could get the deadbolt to, yeah. And I'm like, and if it breaks, it breaks, what are you gonna do, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I push, 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 boom, I came in, nothing broken. I was like, Fuck. oh, thank Ooh. god, that was my, that was that was a little oh, stressful. Wow. Oh my gosh, dude, <laughs> yeah. we had one last night, man. So last night, uh, Max is now crawling out of his bed, so it's official. Um, oh, three o'clock in the morning, I hear this loud thud. 
And I jump up and I, I wake Katrina up right away because she normally, like I've told you guys before, she's obsessed with the Nanit camera and she's got the monitor like right by her ear. So like he breathes weird. She normally wakes up, you know, uh, sits up wow. and then checks on him. So the fact that I hear this loud thud and she's still asleep, I'm like, huh? So I like shake her to, to grab her the monitor. And so she grabs it. And sure as shit, there he is walking in the in his room to go open the door and come into our room. So she gets up and goes get him. I was watching it this morning. He like fell head first. So oh, like, you, so you showed me. Yeah, he so flipped he, over there. Yeah, he flipped over <laughs> and landed. And luckily, he tucked his head so he didn't hand like land right on his skull. But flipped over, landed on his back, loud thud. So oh, yeah, I think we're gonna. Um, I think so what you gotta do. You gotta put it out just a regular bed. Yeah, well, he. So the bed that we have is one of those convertible ones, right? It starts yeah. off as a crib and then it moves. Uh, I think yeah. it has like three you stages. Even take one of those railings off, right? And yeah, just have it. Open yeah, yeah. So way. it ends up yeah. being like, a, and it actually turns. I think so. There's rails on the side, yeah, but then not on the got. not yeah. on the end or whatever. And then I think it converts one more time after that. But yeah, no. So that that's interesting. We're going through like this growth spurt right now too, or, or regression, where his his sleep is off and he's weird and he's trying to talk right now. We're definitely in this this weird couple weeks right now of him trying to make a, a new leap. Well, so. now this because now you're going to change the bed. You're going to deal with the he's going to come into your room. Yeah, for sure. In the night because yeah. now but, he's got the freedom to. But yeah, you got to go in that direction eventually, right? And it's like he's already proven he can climb out. Yeah, it'll so be interesting because she was concerned. I feel like we did such a good job of building a routine to him that it's not going to change that much. I mean, obviously, yes, he'll be able to get up, and I know we're going to have to deal with that a little bit, but I'm hoping that because we've done, I mean, we, we were able to put him in bed, and he'd still, he, like, he's awake when we put him down and say goodnight mm -hmm. and walk out, and he doesn't cry, and he kind of, you know, rolls around and falls asleep. Every once in a while, when it, we've been on vacation or something, I stay in there and kind yeah. of hold his hand or whatever, and then he kind of falls asleep. So, I think it'll stay kind of simple. where it'll be the nights that he does wake up in the middle of the night. I predict that he'll get up, but luckily he sleeps through the night 90% of the time. It just happens to be, we're going through another one of these little regressions, which is the inevitable like this. And you know, this as you're going through and, and you're probably got a good, good streak going right now, but the inevitable happens. You get in a great group, good streak for two months. And then all of a sudden a new leap happens. And then he decides to wake up two hours. Well, yeah, every two for hours. us, it's because we moved, he was doing good. Now that we are in a different, house he's well i knew that was gonna happen i yeah. thought it was crazy yeah. you guys were hiring the sleep expert before a week well, before we had moved to. we had to i know i know yeah. where you're at but i'm like dude they're going to start all over again because yeah. anytime yeah, right. we take him into a new bed or a new place it's i have to start that whole thing all over is again. he more adjusted to the place up in Truckee now or <sighs> dude it's Truckee is still and we even did the dark blinds in there so it's blacked out it's still different man he knows he's not home and even all the times that he's been up there uh it's better but it, he still ends up in our bed at three o'clock in the morning. You know, it's. I think we had one, maybe two nights of him sleeping, going to bed right on time, right the normal routine, sleeping all the way through uh, the night, uh, and then and then getting up like at his normal time. Two of the times, I think we got that. The rest of the time, struggled to get him down. He finally goes down. Then he wakes up about three o'clock, and then Katrina just pulls him into bed with us at three o'clock, and we let now him. Now you know. guys were up there the whole time. Yeah. And you were with, with friends? Yeah, my so my same childhood friends I talk about on the show all the time that we grew up in high school together. This is kind of our traditional week that we take off together and uh, mostly golf now since that's what my two best friends have moved into. And I have to say that I'm starting to fall in love with the sport a little oh, bit. Oh, no. I am. Dude, I am oh, crossing no. over. I, I am crossing over. If I know you, if you haven't already done this, you probably what, yeah, How many probably, thousands of dollars have right. you spent on golf stuff? So, yeah, I've definitely did that. So, I actually, <laughs> yeah. I, like I, and... I, I, I accidentally bought three pairs of shoes before I had left, and I couldn't find them. And I was so pissed that I just bought all these nice new sh uh, golf shoes. And then I get home and see them behind my closet door. I stopped at my storage unit. I was te tearing the garage apart. I couldn't remember where I put them, and I had them like organized. Why, why golf shoes? What do, what do they do? They have little grippers on them because you do shots like on like a on a hill. Little sometimes. tiny spikes. Yeah, they have little, oh, just okay. real, they look like so. I had these they're actually cool Air Maxes that look like normal sneakers, but on the bottom they have the the spikes for golf. Are you the worst one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm still really. <laughs> yeah, bad. but you're the best dressed, right? I, you know, people ask me because I, I did post on my story of of golfing, so everyone's like, "Oh, what do you shoot?" And yeah. like, I'm not there yet. Okay, you know how I judge a round is by yeah. how many balls I kept I my lose. ball. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, that's a huge. If so, I went like this last time I shot, I only lost two balls. For me, that's a big deal. Like to go 18 holes and I only had to play with two balls. That's a big freaking deal for me. I are, mean, I, I remember when I first yeah, started, I lose 15, 20 balls. Now, are you train? Do you train when you're up there? 
is or I, are you off? I lifted zero. Wow. I didn't train one. And now I had intentions to, yeah. but uh, a lot of stuff didn't go accordingly for me up there. Uh, one, my my friends that were supposed to be up there early, they didn't get up there until two or three days later. My other buddy got up there one day, uh, one or two days after I did. Um, we just we couldn't have timed this week uh, for a worse time for a lot of the things that uh, was going on with the business. I mean, we just had a ton of stuff that landed on that week, and it was just things that couldn't pause. And oh, we'll handle that next yeah. week when we get back. So I really spent all the way till Thursday, uh, kind of working, and then you know, whenever I wasn't working, just giving myself a little mm -hmm. bit of R and R, not doing anything. And honestly, the few times that I, I could have lifted, I was like, nah, I don't want to. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I've been fitness and working it was on my mind, and actually training just reminded me of that. And all I wanted to do was reset mm -hmm. and do nothing. And so. I didn't lift a single. Now we were extremely active though. So, I mean, if I wasn't golfing 18 holes, we were out at the lake, we were out at the pool, we were out taking walks and hikes. And so I stayed really active, but I didn't weight train at all while I was up now, there. Now, when you're, when you guys are up there with your friend, cause I know when we all go up together, we do the thing where we alternate who right. makes dinner. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do the same thing over there? Yeah, that comes from us, right? We started that tradition with Katrina's family years ago. And I just love doing that, right? We're, uh, you know, one person is, or one couple is responsible for a day of food. And that includes clean up everything. You know? Now, do you have a, is there like one person that always makes like the easy, you know, I'm like, Oh, we're making sandwiches. So I used to be this guy. <laughs> so I was that guy. We ordered pizza. Uh, I used to be the guy that would get like what you just said, pizza. I did chili cheese dogs one time. Like, and the reason why I used to do it in the past was because I'm like the guy who is the, the, the health nut of the group. Yeah. And so everyone's like, Oh, it's Adam's night. We're going to have to eat chicken breast and rice. and yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everybody used to shit on me that I always cooked something healthy. And so I started throwing curveballs. I'm going to make chili cheese dogs for these guys. I'm going to order pizza. They all like that shit, right? And then everybody's all let down because I didn't put any real effort into the dinner. <laughs> so it's kind of tradition that you kind of bring it, you know? So it started off as like whatever, but what's kind of neat about it when you've been doing it for a long time, like because, and you only have to do one major meal, you know, everybody seems to bring their A game. So I actually smoked ribs is mm. what I did. So I did. And Doug had set me up with the um, rib racks. Is that what it just were there? Yeah, I call them that. So, it, it, so you know, his little smoker, yeah. you really can only fit like two, two racks of ribs in there. But I could fit four, uh, double the amount with these rib racks. So it's, it sets the, I don't know if you guys saw the picture. I took a picture oh, of yeah, it. Like yeah, it sets yeah. them up vertically. Yeah, it sets them up vertically. And then I, I smoke them, I smoke them like that. So I was really excited to, it was a six okay. hour smoke. Okay. So are you doing the, are these normal pork ribs? Or are you doing heritage pork? No, it's butcher box. Oh yeah. Oh, speaking of heritage, did you look that up? When we, did. Last time we all went blank. Yeah, 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 I did. Oh, you did. Yeah. So number one, they're raised more humanely. They typically are allowed to be out in pasture. Um, they're, they typically use less or no antibiotics. Apparently they're more hardy so they can withstand things better ah. so they don't have to be fed so many antibiotics the the meat is darker and more marbled so there is a difference in the meat that's why it tastes different i feel like regular pork is flavorless then inherited well, so pork that's got what I, much more flavor this is the thing that i we, we got yeah. on last time that i thought was so interesting is you know admitting that listen grass-fed beef is leaner and less marbly and so grass-fed beef doesn't taste as rich or as good as right. you know your grain fed beef. Like that's, I mean, it's healthier for you. But right. as far as the taste, the opposite is true with the heritage pork. I think that the the heritage pork is tastes way better than regular. Pork. Way better. Yeah. It's also got better fatty acid profile. So and in in some studies show it's got better nutrients because of the way that they're raised. So they're out in pasture. They're not like in confined to cages. Yeah. Now it's typically more expensive. Um, but I think it's, I mean, like I said, I'm not a fan of pork. I never was. I never liked pork. I, I, always, thought pork it was bland, I always thought it was bland until I had the heritage pork, uh, pork chops from butcher box. And I didn't know the difference. I just saw that. Oh, okay. You know how sometimes they give you those add on deals. Yeah. So if you go on for people that know, if you, if you sign up for butcher box, every once in a while they'll have these deals where you can add on things and it's like a discount, big discount. And it'd be like a great price. So there were like these pork chops. I don't remember what the price was, but it was really good. So I said, all right, whatever. Let's give it a shot. I never like pork chops. Really. And I remember I tasted them. I'm like, this is yeah. not the same. And that's when I started. Their, ri their yeah, pork ribs smoking them. Their pork ribs are better than any grocery store ribs I've bought. Yeah. That's why. I, and I've done it now a couple of times where I bought the other ones and done the exact same recipe. What sucks though, you know what? I smoked for six hours and I, it didn't turn out. Why? I was pissed, dude. So- 
the first half, like the first two hours, at least the, okay, the flavor was on point. So I've got like this whole, I actually, I, I went away from the, the beer and did apple juice the last time. And I actually, the, the beer audible is better, Doug. Mm. So like I, the original recipe calls for apple juice. I didn't have apple juice. So then I went and did it with apple juice. Not as good. The original beer audible that you called. So I went back to that because I just liked the way that tastes. And uh, again, the flavor was on point. The meat sucked, and the way the reason why the meat sucked was the first two hours is all about your flavor. That's when you that's when you are, are you season it. That's when you smoke it for two hours. That gives the the ribs the real good flavor, and then you wrap it in foil and you cook it for another three hours, which is what makes the meat just fall off the bone. Well, the Traeger is it's a little I don't know if you know how these work, but it's like a little screw thing, and it feeds pellets in this mm-hmm. little fire that like manages digitally manages the temperature perfect. But it's a tiny little fire, and in Truckee it gets so windy, and so it blew out my flame when I was at on the three hour part when I left. You didn't know? Uh, I didn't know because I, I that one doesn't have the digital read or the the uh, one that's connected to your phone like mine is. And so I'm out at the pool with everybody and hanging out, and then I come back and see my temps drop to like 120. Then I try and salvage it in the oven, and just you know everybody else was like, "Oh, they're good, Adam." And I'm like, "Nah." You know what whack. trips me out about up there is that the altitude makes the meat cook. Yeah. Is it faster or slower? There's something about the altitude. It, it that messes with. It also messes with baking. Baking too. it messes yeah. the most with. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it, it, it does have an effect. Does it take sure. longer or is I it short? It takes longer. Because of the altitude. Yes. Very strange, right? Here's another thing that's weird. And I don't know I, I don't know if this is a speculate. Justin said the same thing. So we're in Kauai, obviously out in the sun a lot, right? I don't get sunburn nearly as easily in yeah. Kauai as I do up in, in yeah. Truckee. And I don't know if it's because uh, we're at higher altitude. There's less atmosphere, what the deal is. But I, I know that I get sunburn way easier. Obviously, I was worried about this. You know? <laughs> I had like a whole freaking suitcase devoted to like, you know, sunblock. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did fine. Like, and Courtney did fine. We, we just got, you know, a little bit of the color each day. Uh, I got a little bit sunburned when we were on the boat just cause my back was like, I got all like confident and had my shirt off the whole time. And like, my back was just getting like roasted, but even then it, it, it recovered. I'm like, there's gotta be something because when we're, when I'm in Santa Cruz and I have my shirt off for that long and we're, at, we're exposed on the beach. I get just completely red and like lobstered out and definitely. Yeah. Like, but there it's, it's really strange. It, it doesn't have that same like intensity. Oh, yeah. I noticed the same, uh, the same thing. Yeah. Um, so I got a story for you. So obviously we're at a resort and there's a pool and so everybody's hanging out or whatever. I don't know if it's like a third or fourth day. The, I, I love, I love people watching at pools in resorts because yeah. alcohol is pretty remarkable. See how people's attitudes and stuff start to change, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there was this group of older women. And when I say older, I mean like 60s, maybe 70s. I don't know if they were like meeting together for some reunions, like five, six of them together. And they were getting smashed. Anyway, at one point, they were taking pictures of me. They were saying <laughs> shit to each other. They like from a bot- distance, or do you know? Th- oh th- no, 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 you bro. know what's happening. Oh no, no, no. Like they they were being discreet, but but not like they were like letting me see that they were doing. Then they'd go by the pool, so I was like you know kind of laying out or whatever. And they would they'd go by as a group, and then they'd say something and they'd stare. And they go by, I'm like, you dirty women. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are terrible. Oh, I had some similar, it was ha- hilarious. I had some similar happen to me at the gas station yesterday. I'm on my way back from Truckee and I go into the, the Shell station right over by our house, right? That's where I gas up before I leave. And uh, and I'm, I'm grabbing some Red Bulls for Katrina and uh, my head's down and I'm putting my ATM card in and the two girls behind the counter are speaking Spanish. And I feel like they're talking about me because I'm like in the corner of my eye, I'm looking up and I can kind of like she's like eyeballing me and then they're like they're like giggling and, and talking in Spanish. And then I, and I, but I still like act like I have no idea what, if they are or they're not because I'm not sure, especially after making that mistake with the, the photograph that one time. I'm always very cautious <laughs> to assume that they're talking about me or they yeah. want anything from me. So, anyways, she, uh, she says after I, I pay, she goes, um, You're strong. <laughs> You're strong? Yeah. I don't know what to say. What's the response to that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank what you, you. What do you mean? What by gave strong? it away? Strong I am. 
<laughs> I don't even remember what I said back to her, but I just kind of like smiled and said thank you or whatever. But yes. she said they were they were talking back and forth, and it took me a minute to register. But uh, she, bro, like, that's the best compliment. I, I thought that was. I would yeah. rather hear that than anything hey, else. Hey, what made me feel the best about it was I just told you guys I didn't work out for an entire week, so I'm seven days of <laughs> no pump, no working out, eating not so great. Yeah. And on my way home to where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get my shit together. No more alcohol. No more bad food. I'm gonna be training. I get the compliment of a you look strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah I nice. can. I curl the forty five. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes. Yeah. How'd you know? Yeah, How'd you know I was so strong? Yeah, strong. That's, I am. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's crazy. Speaking of strength, uh, a study came out. This was a meta analysis. So you guys know the controversy at the Olympics. I'm gonna pull this up here real quick. The controversy with the runner the, with the marijuana. No, no. This is for the 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 trans athlete that's going to oh, compete in, in weightlifting, weightlifting, right? In weightlifting, yeah. right? Oh, that, they're still they're still talking about this. I thought that was well. Already. There's a lot of controversy in the Olympics. She took third, right? No, I don't think they competed yet. Oh, I thought she already competed. She took second or third. I don't know. I don't Maybe know. Doug can look it up. I don't know. But what I what I know I is that they, they were they, no. Yet. I don't think they started. I don't mm. think they started. Yeah, yeah. just like yeah, oh, yeah. Trials, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Right. So uh, the there was a lot of controversy. The Olympic Committee said yes, we're going to let her compete, uh, but then we're going to reevaluate. Essentially, we're going to look at everything again. So this this meta analysis came out of the British Journal of Sports Medicine where they did uh, a study. They systematically reviewed the literature to assess how long-term testosterone-suppressing, gender-affirming, hormone therapy influenced lean body mass, muscular area, muscular strength, and hemoglobin and hematocrit. So, you know, your red blood cells, your strength, all that stuff. Here's the conclusion, okay? The hormone therapy does reduce muscle, does reduce hemoglobin, hematocrit. However, the values of strength and performance remain above that that are observed in cisgender women, even after three years. In other words, there's a performance and strength uh, difference between... <laughs> yeah, I know. Weird, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they do these studies and <laughs> oh just my like, goodness. how much money did you and time did you spend on this study to, fi <laughs> to find out that fire's hot? Like, do yeah. we really need to study this? But anyway, this, was, this, was, this was came out of the British Journal of Sports Medicine. That's hilarious. And they came out and, and said that. Speaking like, of obvious and ridiculous yeah. and stupid... Like, that's not true. Did you guys see the... Uh, it was like a... Uh, headline. I think it was CNBC or NBC that put this out. This is the most ridiculous. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever read in my life. Ugh. It said, "Inflation." This was the title. Oh yeah, inflates inflation silver lining. So in other words, like this is the good thing about inflation: your salary will be higher. <laughs> <laughs> and so your bread and milk and yeah, house. No. Do people not know? Dude, it's so insulting. Yeah. Come on. Well, yeah, go to Zimbabwe. Yeah. You make like a billion Zimbabwe oh, bucks for God. every hour. All right. Oh, I God. can't believe that people, why would they write such a stupid article? Yeah, it's and I bet you there's people just, reading it that are like, oh, good. The unfortunate oh, yeah. part is there's a lot of stupid people. Yeah, but how many people are pissed cool. when they don't it's, get a raise yeah. on top oh, of that? Oh, man. Do you guys follow, do you guys follow uh, Kevin Hart? Do you guys follow him? Yeah. I do. But Did I, you see it was his birthday? Did you see what Nick Cannon did no I didn't oh see my it. god please go doug go to uh kevin hart's instagram page and go back maybe one week now it's been about that long uh and uh, nick cannon bought sent i, I so i'm so want to do this to you guys i think just think it would be one of the fucking funniest things ever oh, yeah. he sends he sends him a llama as a birthday gift wow a llama yeah could wow. you imagine if you uh, yeah because what do you do now? yeah what do you do uh, someone drops how do i get rid of this now uh, yeah could you imagine if i sent you a llama it shows up at your house and you're like what the fuck <laughs> do i do with this Spit, i die spits laughing at you. i'm like yeah that, that is so uh, so hilarious and clever to do something like I that. I saw that, um, was it Jake Paul or one of those guys that sent Conor McGregor like uh, the, oh, the, the, necklace. the necklace of oh, him yeah, yeah to uh, Dustin Poirier. They like sent it to him as a gift. By, by the way, uh, I don't Wait, know. If, look at, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's great, all angry. So what do I do with this? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I love llamas. And I, it was one of my favorite animals. Are you serious? I swear to God. You I mean, be a llama name lover. a cuter animal. Than that. Llama lover. It's, it's, just, got, it's got the face. It's like, lover. It's got that face. They whatever. spit on you. <laughs> They're cute, man. I like alpacas. Alpacas. Yeah, they too. seem just, yeah, like agitated all the time. Yeah. You know? So, so I, I don't. Did we talk about Conor McGregor's broken leg in the podcast? Did we bring that up on the Oh, we kind of did when it first happened, but yeah, we we saw definitive evidence of how that actually yeah, went. He down, broke his right? leg before he went and stepped yeah, on. Yeah, just by kicking. Yeah, because he was trying to say it had nothing to do with anything. But 
You know what's weird? I don't think we talked about it because that happened while we were on, gone, right? Uh, I think so. I think we brought it up. No. Well, we I saw a no, video no. of Joe It was Rogan at my brother, or at my son's birthday party, and we had already, that was the weekend right before you guys took off, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right, Doug? That's what, that was the, the. Yeah, I think so. Maybe we talked about it in Hawaii. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talked about it personally. We didn't talk about it on the no, show. No, because the fight happened. Did you guys watch? I watched it. Did you I watched just the clips of what happened. Oh, I watched the actual you fight. The fight? He broke his leg by kicking first, right? He yeah. First broke it. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes a step back. So they 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 broke it down. On like the the, the he did, he uh, checked him with his forearm. Yeah. So there was a kick like right before that where he checked it with his forearm, and you could tell that that's where it probably cr- at least fractured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just the weight of him stepping back on it, the that's what made it go. Now this is like the yeah. third shin break in like a very short period of time for fighters, right? This yeah, is, we've seen we've seen a we've seen it a lot year. lately. It seems like yeah. At what point do you think that they're gonna? Do you think they're gonna have it? Because this can't be good for you the sport UFC sport. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's enough though. I think it's a. I think it's happened to a couple big name fighters in the last year, and so mm-hmm. it seems like a lot. But I think statistically, the still the, the I know that's logical, that. but oftentimes they ban things because yeah. But isn't M- MMA is still considered like one of the safer sports, right? You're right. But what I'm saying is it, one of the reasons, for example, oh. that bare knuckle boxing is illegal everywhere is not because it's more dangerous. It's because it's more bloody. It's more gruesome looking. Yeah, yeah. You, you get more cuts. Barbaric. Oh, so that's yeah. what they probably think. Yeah, and yeah. so what I'm saying is oftentimes they, like, okay, you guys remember Pride? Mm-hmm. Pride allowed uh, head stomps. Did so they, if someone was on the ground. Didn't they used to eye gouges too? <laughs> soccer no. kicks, uh, dude. Like, when you're trying to get up? Fish oh hooks. You could do no, <laughs> they, so fish those, hooks. those are the only things that were banned, actually, in the very oh, first year. Is that what it was? Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. Those are the only two things. You can't eye gouge and you can't fish, fish hook. hook. Everything else was Yeah, bad. in fact, you could kick someone in the balls. There was a there was a fight with a guy named, <laughs> I think his name was Joe Sando. Yeah, or no, Joe San. In his martial Pride doesn't fuck around, Joe Sando. That was his martial art. And he got in a position, the dude literally just hit him in the balls a bunch of times. made him tap out. But anyway. My point with this is is that oftentimes the things that are banned are not banned because they're the most dangerous. They're banned because they're not spectator friendly. Right. So my question is uh, how many how many broke cuz let's be honest, a broken shin where your leg is flopping, mm-hmm. that's not very spectator oh, yeah. friendly, dude. That's terrible. So I mean yeah. at what point do you think are you think they're going to start saying okay, we need to like figure out I mean I out. haven't heard anything like that. I mean, and we've already seen enough. I mean, it's not like this is that new either. I mean, I, I remember I've seen forearms busted and you've seen bones poke out. Like, you've seen some nasty stuff like that happen. But Well, these shins that are breaking, it's, again, like these fighters, their, their career's pretty much done. You've seen it happen to, like, some of these fighters, and they're just, like, Yeah, I think Conor's gone. done. Yeah. I, think, I, I think he's, he's. I mean, I think he will attempt to come back, but I think his, his I, and I, I honestly think he should retire, but he won't. Well, I mean, if you, yeah, break, he won't. if you break your shin and it's clean, um, and it should be okay when it heals, right? Did I don't put know. A I suppose, it was, but it's just no, bro. It was. It's right here at the ankle. Ugh. It's just a really odd place for it. It wasn't like high up here. It was yeah. like down all the way down by his ankle, and he. Compl- I mean, he stood back right on, on the tibia. It was like ooh. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was gnarly. Yeah, because it was that, a good fight, though. That's really unfortunate. It was a good f- back and forth fight. It yeah. was I, the announcers tried to say that uh, McGregor was just getting his ass whooped, but it was not like that. It was a, it was a good close fight. I, I thought they both looked great, and it would look very competitive. And then that happened. It was uh, it was really unfortunate. What's, yeah, what's that's the, too bad. What's the most gruesome injury you guys have seen in person? Have you guys ever seen anything? Oh, yeah. 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 So when I was playing basketball, this was in junior high, I believe, and we were playing at this um, this gymnasium that had like concrete floors. So it wasn't like wood floors that have give at all. It was really cold, and one of my friends was kind of dove out. Uh, to, to get a loose ball and, an, and an, a defender landed right on his arm and literally like, I don't know if you call that a compound fracture, but basically like it popped out of his skin <laughs> and it snapped in half and then his arm was hanging like this and his bones were, were out like this and he looks over at me, looks down and then he, he starts screaming. Out. Oh, he's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, like if he's looking directly in my eyes, he's like, ah! And I'm just like, Ah! <laughs> we had this exchange and then I had to leave. Like I was like feeling like lightheaded and, and woozy. Like I was going to puke because I've never seen anything like that before. Basketball is mine too. How crazy is that? I was in uh I was a sophomore. And so we had just finished our game and varsity was playing 
I was heading in, in the gym. I was heading over to you know like most games on Friday, right? Have uh, like a nachos and soda area, like that you can right out right outside the gymnasium or whatever yeah. that you can get stuff. And so I just picked up some nachos and like a soda, and I'm walking back, and the, it, it's a fast break that they're coming down the the doorway that I'm so I'm standing right here. The hoop is like right here to my right. I stop at the doorway because it's a fast break. I don't want to disrupt anything by kind of cutting around. So I, my buddy and I are standing there waiting. And this dude, uh, big tall white guy, probably like six seven or so, white guy, real lean. And he gets a fast break, and he goes to do a 360 dunk. And he plants his right foot to go do a 360, and his knee and foot stay that direction, and he spins. <laughs> oh. And completely just, <laughs> it was, oh. You heard, you heard the sound. And his foot his foot was pointing the opposite direction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's laying right in front of me and my buddy. I was, Those oh, ones man. are always really that hard. Nachos, I threw them no, away. I was, <laughs> so, couldn't even eat them. I was managing the, the 24 on Hillsdale, and I'm at the front desk, and I hear, blah. Like first of all, a grown man screaming is very unnerving. It's terrifying. It's very unnerving. A grown man crying is also unnerving. I have a story for that too. But this guy's like, ah! and I turn to look, and there was a guy holding his forearm with his arm up like this with the other arm. Bone was sticking out, and it was like in the movies where the blood just goes, yeah, comes uh, out. Like and it's like, steady and he's like, ah! and as, as he's turning, saw <laughs> mining pipe on you. Know, he's blood is going everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? It's like one of those comedy horror. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm like, what the? And so I just stood there. Luckily, I had a trainer there that had some medical experience, and I ran over, and then we call, you know. But, so what happened was is he unloaded a bar improperly. So it flipped, and it oh, flipped, and it God. landed on his forearm and well, snapped, snapped it. Snapped it wow. in half, dude. Ooh. So one, one of the reasons why you see me always put collars on the bar. Oh, You'll wow. Always, always, because I saw that, and I was like, oh, yeah. Never. Oh, wow. And Yikes. then the other, the, the other time, this was... Believe it or not, this is probably more unnerving. This is when I had my gym. I had this trainer guy that that would rent space for me, and this was terrible. He was going through this really rough time with his wife or whatever, and I guess he I don't I, I this I found out later. I guess he found out his wife was leaving him, and you know he was having with found another man. Anyway, he's at the front desk, and one of my female trainers walks up to him, and she's like you know, are, are you okay? Like, come give me a hug. So he goes to hug her, loses his shit, and just, ah! Ah! starts crying. Oh, no. Bro, I don't know what to do. Like, when you hear no. a grown man cry like that, you know, I'm in the <laughs> yeah. back, and I'm like, uh. Yeah, I gotta leave the building. Yeah, I can't. Then, I don't know what to do, here. dude. I feel yeah. uncomfortable. Was it you <laughs> yeah, that, dude, that, that uh, was telling us, was it you so who told us about that they actually, for scary movies, they use uh, baby screams and cries? Did you know uh, that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. yeah, so I guess there's something like like uh, unnerving about a baby's cry or scream, and oh, so when, you hear, that. when yeah. you hear that in scary movies, they intentionally always use like a baby's like cry or scream. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't know. you then. Somebody else was telling me. Yeah, that. I've heard that fact. same thing. Yeah, what do they yeah. Do? have babies and they make them cry? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they. I don't know where they. I don't think it's hard to probably take collect the candy a baby from cry. the baby. Quick, get the recorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah it is unnerving to hear to hear that. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, back to the nutrition thing. So you guys are cooking meals for each other. You're not working out. Are you eating shitty too? Or are you eating good? Um, I wouldn't say I'm. Yeah, I'm eating shitty. Yes, I am. Sure. I'm, okay. I'm. I'm not eating good. I, <laughs> I mean, like how you tried to lie for a second. Yeah, you know, I was gonna try and lie for okay. our audience to make to make me feel better a little bit. No, I mean, I'm not that bad, right? So what? It, yeah. What does shitty mean? Yeah. Like, so shitty means I'm missing my macros. I should be eating, and I'm making poor choices sometimes. So like a day for Are you me, eating cake? No, no, I didn't mm. eat cake on this trip. I did have some ice cream though. Yeah. Um cheesecake. Like a day a day would look like this. Like I wouldn't eat until two o'clock and I would I'd have a cup of coffee. That would be normally be it. Mm. I know I'm not being active, so I know I don't need a lot, and I know I'm probably not gonna make great food choices. So I a lot of times would skip breakfast that everybody else was eating. And then at like two o'clock I'd eat something, uh, I'd eat a sandwich, right? And I'd eat like a jalapeno cheddar, you know, roast beef type of sandwich that's got all kinds of sauces and dressing and cheese on it. So not and I and I have chips with it, uh, and then dinner time I would have something like ribs or let's see what else everybody I'm trying to remember what else I mean one night we did have pizza so yeah I did not eat I did not eat good I did not get enough of my protein intake that I should have been uh, doing I made some poor choices but I also was mindful of the calorie intake because one of the things I've learned to do is I've gotten older when these times happen I I can real easily allow a trip like that in the past to snack and eat whatever, enjoy breakfast when breakfast is being served, eat candy in between something, also have dessert and like 
not only make miss my macros and eat bad choices, but pile it all on and also not work out, which can be really dangerous, can really set me back for a week. So I really, I, I mean, I didn't do a lot of damage considering- I do the same thing. I'll eat worse, but I will eat less. Yes. that Which makes a big difference. Right. Rather than eating worse and more. The, and that's what I would thing. do. So in the past, because of my insecurity of never wanting to lose weight and lose muscle, I was so concerned about losing muscle that if I decided to eat like shit, I would just overindulge. Because my always thought was, oh God, well, let me sh make sure I get my protein, make sure I get all my calories. And even though I'm going to eat like trash and not work out, at least I won't lose muscle. Yeah. So that was my fear that where yeah. I do not subscribe to that philosophy yeah. anymore whatsoever. Well, you know, the cool thing about Hawaii is the good, there's a lot of uh, easy, healthy options because the fish mm -hmm. is just absolutely incredible. The one thing that I'll eat there when I'm there is, and this is like a comfort food, is their loco moco. Oh, yeah. uh, breakfast. You kept yeah, hyping that up. Oh, every day, man. The, pa the patty and the rice, and they get the eggs, and they put the- See, I pressed it a bit because like, I'm not real good with bread and gluten and all that stuff, but I was like, you know, whatever, dude. I don't want to be like a pain in everybody's ass all the time with this. So I was like, oh, I'll eat the sandwich, you know, and I'll eat this, uh, you know, egg sandwich in the morning, and then, oh, my God, I would just- totally it would roast me like midday i was just like acid dude. reflux like crazy <laughs> dude. A, i'm like popping like the, tums like, I was two gonna seconds, say, there's a couple times when we were oh, there bro. and justin when we're hiking you know he'd like have to like you know stumble for a second and then like something would fall out of his pocket it'd be a tums <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or on the beach you know i was leaving a and trail he'd, of tums he'd like all run the and island, dude yeah, see tums i feel like with out. you guys so if i'm vacationing or i'm hanging out with you guys i i always eat a lot tighter right but when i'm with my buddies who do not diet do not eat clean whatsoever i tend to go with the flow yeah. Oh, you order pizza, I'm eating pizza right. too. Oh, yeah. you brought dessert out, I'm going to have dessert. I'm going to enjoy my week. I'm not going to be the the health nut guy that everyone, oh, that's going to make everyone feel guilty of yeah. eating. I'm going to indulge with them and have a good time. Be mindful. I'm, I'm going to have two slices of pizza instead of being an asshole and eating eight like I would have in yeah. the past, you know, or putting away the, the little pint of ice cream instead mm. of crushing the whole thing. So I did things like that. Well, I pay for it now. So it's like I have to like go back to stuff that's like easily digestible and healthier options. Otherwise, like, like, I'm just going to be suffering. I know. Do you guys do? So when I come off a trip like that, I can't wait to, cr I crave like healthy food. Oh, yeah. Food. Home cooked food. Yeah. We were just like, I can't okay, wait we're dialing tonight. this like, in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was done. I was done eating out. I was yeah. like over it. I needed to have, right. And here's something I did that I uh, haven't done in a long time. I tend to bring a lot of, uh, like I'll prepare, right? So I'll have my. Hey, were you supplemented I'll, out this time or? So I forgot to bring the green juice. Uh, which which is a, which I was relying on too because Sal is always <laughs> yeah, the guy yeah. that brings the yeah. stuff. So yeah. I didn't bring it, and it I, it's so valuable when you're not eating a lot of vegetables. Now, can you tell the difference? Yes. On a week? Oh, you can clear totally. So I started. I would ask for sides of vegetables, but it was like a stir fry. It was hard to get like just plain, you know, vegetables. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of options. No. Yeah. So and I didn't have the green juice, and I could totally tell. Yeah. I could tell big time. Is which, it mostly digestion, your stool, like we're energy? All of like the above. Oh, wow. All of the above. Wow. So if I don't have vegetables, just doing a serving or two of the green juice, make now vegetables are better. You're always better off eating real food, obviously, but in replace of nothing, like if I, have, I don't have yeah. enough vegetables. So I noticed. I did notice a big difference. I noticed it throws off my my uh, like my stool timing and everything. Yeah. Like I, like I'll be my my pooping schedule will be off. It won't. I won't be regular. Like if I'm not. God doing damn, that. we sound like old. <laughs> 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 Here's my poop schedule, Buck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take you guys through this yeah. real quick. Hold on, my alarm's going off. Time to yeah. poop. <laughs> it's that time again. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, it is true. I'll tell you what. If you if anybody who's in there, I, I'd say probably, you probably start to figure this out by the time you get in your mid thirties. You start to realize that there's a time. There's times you, you go to the bathroom. You don't want to miss your windows, man. No. Uh, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Directions, barbecuing, and pooping. I think that's like the three things that like dad's like, oh, that's <laughs> yeah, like the dude. thing, right? You like guarantee Indigestion. You and, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> like, like all those problems. Like, dude, come on. Hey, real quick. Thanks for listening to this podcast, but go check this out. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. This company makes songs and beats that change your state of mind, actually change your brain's wavelength so that you can do meditation, you can do focus, and much more. It really works. And if you go to that link, you actually get a discount. Again, brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. First question is from Sally Spicer. What's the best way to train for pull-ups? I'd really like to be able to do a few without having to use an assisted pull-up machine but don't know how to get there. Yeah, so the advice I'm going to give right now for getting better at pull-ups is applicable to any 
single movement or exercise that you really want to focus on and improve upon. So the old thought process was, well, I'm just going to make sure my back workouts that I do pull-ups first and that I progressively overload. So once or twice a week, I'm going to do pull-ups and, and that'll work a little bit, but it's not nearly as effective as what I'm about to say. Practice pull-ups Often. And when I say practice, I don't mean work out. So I don't mean you go and do a bunch of pull-ups to fatigue and get sore. What I mean is literally every single day do a few pull-ups. So let's say you're let's say you can max do 10 pull-ups. Let's say that's your total max amount of pull-ups. Let's pull say even less than that. I think it's probably yeah, less. a lot of like times you ask this question, you can only do three. like three. That's like, fine. Yeah. So let's say you can only do three pull-ups. Well, four or five times every day, do one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Literally put up a pull-up bar in your doorway and do one pull-up and then go about your day and then a few hours later do it. And so you're practicing constantly this kind of lower to moderate intensity activity. And what you'll find when you do this is you get really good, really strong, really fast. There's, I've done nothing more effective than this. Well, I'll, add, I'll add one more thing to that that it kind of blew my mind when I started to do this later on. I never thought – so I when I wanted to get better at pull-ups in the past, I used to do this thing where I started every workout with pull-ups, and I would just try and get as many as I could, and i just keep trying to add to that, right, and, and increase the frequency of how often. So it was like every start of every workout. Uh, that was a strategy. I, I never thought to do this, like when, especially when I was only able to do three to five pull-ups to load that. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I'm only doing three to five. My goal is to get to 10 or 20 or 30. Why would I load three? Yeah. And then what? So I can only do one? But boy, does that... I tell you what, if you, if you can do three pull-ups, uh, just your body weight, but you can do maybe one loaded with 25 pounds or more, practicing with that every now and then if you complement that to your increased frequency. So if I, in a perfect world, someone, their main goal is to do, get better at pull-ups. The first advice I'm giving is exactly what you said. Get a pull-up bar in your house. Every time you walk by the pull-up bar, jump up, do, you know, a few less than what your total max normally is and do that multiple times per day, every single day. And it's not a workout. You're practicing. No, that's it. That's all you're doing. You jump yeah. up. If you're, like you said, if your max is three to five, you jump up, you do two real quick, walk away, right. mm -hmm. you know, come back an hour later, do it again. And you just do that all the time. Right. That's one piece. And then the other piece would be when you go into the gym and it's actually maybe it's back day and you're actually training your your back, I would actually start it with pull-ups and I would do it weighted. I would mm -hmm. do it weighted. And if you can only do one, it's okay, do one, rest for a solid two yep. minutes or whatever, jump up, do another single like that, and get really strong with, with resistance on those pull-ups and then cut the resistance after you've been doing that for a month or two and see see what happens. Yeah, yeah and that's a little difficult if, if you can't even do one pull-up, uh, you know, because I, I do think that that those are very, you know, applicable advice uh, in terms of like frequency. But um, if they do have access to one of those machines where they can actually get assistance, you know, that that would help in terms of like you still want to add the frequency. So whatever you can do with with like a bare minimum amount amount of assistance, uh, you know, get a few reps, but do it you know consistently throughout the week. So that's something that you're teaching your body to get better at, and you're gradually you know bringing that pin up so you do less and less. Uh, you know, of that assistance help. Um, and also rubber bands. I would say bands are great yeah, yeah. for that as well. So here's something I did. I had a client, a female client, very athletic. She never really did resistance training, but played a lot of sports. And then she, she said to me, when she hired me, I really want to be able to do at least six pull-ups. That was her goal. And at the moment, she couldn't even do one body weight pull-up. Now she had big muscular legs. So she was like, a, you know, she had a decent amount of weight on her, lean, but still it was challenging for her. So here's what we did is I had her put a band around, I had her get a pull-up bar, put it in her one of her doorways. She put a band around it so she could step on the band. It would assist her doing the pull-up. And then she, I told her to do one pull-up several times a day, every single day. And she said, well, what if I feel like I could do much more? What if I get stronger? I said, every week we'll reevaluate and add more, but I want you to start with one. I don't care how easy it feels. Mm -hmm. All week you're only doing one. The next week, so in other words... I didn't allow her to progressively overload right. until a whole week passed. Why? Because the frequency was so high that it would have been very easy for her to overdo it. Right. So all she was doing was just practicing one, one, one with this band. And then the next week we reevaluated and then I put gave her a lighter band. I think it was like, no joke, I'm not making this up. I think it was like 30 or 45 days later she was able to do five or six pull-ups. Not even be able to do one. So that's a huge, yeah. very fast progression. But the key is low intensity, yeah. practice, don't work out. 
and then don't progressively overload for a little while. Get really good at this easy practice for a week or two, then add a little bit of load and then continue that frequency. You could but you could do this with any exercise, by the way. Let's say you wanted to get really good at barbell squats. If you had a, a cage in your garage and you did the same thing, you went out there, did a couple reps, you know, three or four times every single day, uh, you know, low intensity your strength would explode on that as well. It's a really, really good technique for improving strength quickly. Yeah, your body gets real good at it at a certain point. Next question is from Sharif Ibrahim980. I want to grow the size of my arms. Are heavy weights and low reps better or lower weight and higher reps? Okay, so uh, so number one, there's value in both low and high reps. You do definitely want to cycle through both of them, especially if you're always training in one. But here's a general, this is not, of course, there's always a, a difference between individuals, but here's some general advice when it comes to building uh, bigger arms. Lower weight, uh, excuse me, uh, lower reps, higher weight for compound arm movements, lower weight, higher reps for isolation arm movements. So let's talk about the triceps for a second. What would be a compound tricep exercise, right? Dips, close grip bench press, lower, lower reps, higher weight lends itself pretty well to those exercises. Isolation would be like a tricep press down, overhead tricep extension, a skull crusher. In those cases, uh, lower weight, higher reps. What about the biceps? People always, they typically don't know of a compound bicep exercise. I tell you what. Pull-ups. Yeah. You do it, yeah. You do a palms back, right? Supinated grip, chin, chin up, up, where you squeeze yeah. the arms at the top. That is a compound bicep exercise. Low reps, high weight with that works really well. Then, of course, any other bicep exercise, curls, preacher curls, concentration curls, whatever, tend to do a little better with the low weight, uh, you know, high reps. The other thing I would add that I, I didn't learn this until maybe midway into my career was uh, the importance of manipulating the strength curve, uh, or in this case, positioning of the elbows, right? So when you're talking about bicep and tricep, um, you where you position your elbows tends to change uh, the strength curve. So where it's the weight is most difficult for the exercise. Uh, you'll see somebody do this, and I was guilty of this, right? I would go over because I love the cable pushdowns, and I would do cable rope pushdowns, and I would do straight bar yeah. cable pushdowns, and then I would do reverse grip cable pushdowns, and that's all the same for the tricep. Like the the the, the pronating or supinating of the wrist have uh, little to nothing to do with where where your your triceps are being stimulated or how they're being stimulated. It's pretty much the same thing. But simply by taking a tricep push down with your elbows positioned by your side and then doing something like skull crushers with the dumbbells where you're lying down changes that strength curve. And that in itself, doing that, I, I saw a huge difference yeah. in the growth of my arms for mm -hmm. both bicep and tricep. And we did a video on our YouTube channel. Long, this is like one of our first videos when we were really bad. But we gave this advice for bicep and triceps and we gave examples uh, so if you go on, to, I don't know what the title of it is. Maybe Andrew can look up the title for this. But I remember it was when we used to do the, the video with all three of us together. We were at the <laughs> other gym. And I know we showed, I think, three bicep and three tricep uh, right. variations that we would recommend that you do. like Most beneficial angles yes. that you can kind of uh, manipulate that with. Yes. Yeah, I would say for biceps, rule of thumb, you do an exercise where your arm is at your side. An exercise where your elbow is out in front and then one where your elbow is behind you. Triceps at your sides in front of you and then overhead. I think that kind of uh, hits everything. Right. Um, and if you do that throughout the week, you're going to get good variety in the movements that you do for your arms. And you should get some pretty good results. Now, when somebody says arm, I mean, they're, they got to be including... Uh, shoulders in there as well because I'm always thinking about that. Well, that's a good like, point, Justin. And no, they're not. Normally, they're yeah, not, but they should just, be. Yeah. Because I, I'll tell you, and I know where you're going with this is like developing your shoulders make your buys and tries it makes everything look, look better. way better. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially yeah when you get that definition in that um, um, those clear lines. I think is uh, so. Don't neglect your shoulders and make. And there's so many different angles of approach for the shoulder specifically over those other two, mm -hmm. you know, muscle groups. So uh, yeah, don't don't neglect. Like Here's one thing. This is an advanced uh, technique, and when I first heard it, I thought it was complete bullshit. But then I tried it; it actually works. Occlusion training. Yeah. If now it's not going to replace your normal training. So if your normal programming sucks, then you can then don't worry about this. But if you've got good programming, you're doing everything right, and you want to squeeze out another no joke quarter inch on your arms, uh, which you will get from uh, from doing this occlusion training. 
is very strangely effective. And I say strangely oh, effective you, is weird. If you're doing all the things that we just named, if you are, are you're hitting the elbow positioning, like we said, you're incorporating compound lifts, mm -hmm. low reps, high reps. If you're tackling all that, adding inclusion training once a week oh, yeah. to that will will help somebody who's listening right now. If you're not doing those things that we talked about, address those things first. That will help you develop your arms. Next question is from Marco0801. Are lifting belts necessary for heavy lifting? Everywhere I look, answers are vague. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid Definitely not. working no. out, I remember when I was a kid working out and you know, I first started lifting, my uncles would tell me, you put a belt on. It'll protect your back. Make sure you wear a belt. That's what you got to... Um, no, it's, it's, it's not necessary. Uh, now, can you lift more weight when you wear a belt? Yeah, because the belt is this external form of stability in your core. Um, it actually makes your, your, your core fire differently. So mm -hmm. when you're wearing a, a, especially a power lifter belt, right? The old bodybuilder ones where they're skinning the front, that's stupid. That's kind of wasting. That's, that's like you're using the belt, but then it's skinning the front. So you're losing a lot of the effect. You want one that's the same thickness all the way around. Your core pushes out against mm -hmm. the belt, which then creates the stability. And so you can lift more weight as a result. And it changes the recruitment pattern. Your body will actually learn to stabilize better with a belt than it does uh, without a belt. And then you get stuck in this loop. Like I'm in, right? I started deadlifting. And because I trained with, because powerlifters taught me, they were like, always wear a belt when you, when you deadlift and you squat. Now, uh, you know, I, I did it for a, I did a year with no belt. And it was still felt very strange to me because I'd trained for 14 years, right. you know, heavy wearing it's a whole belt. different mechanism that it, you're working with. It is. But I mean, unless you're going to compete with the belt, uh, there's really no need to wear it. Now, unless you want to lift more weight, but again, that looks cool for the people around you, but it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference in terms of muscle development and, and stuff like I that. I always have a hard time answering these questions because these are tools that I think we all use. But I, I also think that we <laughs> would admit that it's not ideal. If I was building the perfect avatar, right? So this this client that I have a good relationship with exercise and food and is healthy and strong and the, the attributes, all the attributes of this, this person or this avatar you'd want to have, one of them would be that they have no need for straps or belts. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a fact. I would, I would want my client that I'm building from scratch to be able to deadlift their max load without ever having to use straps. I'd want them to be able to squat their max load and not have to use a belt. Now, the truth is we all grew up in an era where we utilize these tools just in less than both of us, but you and I probably a lot. And so every once in a while, you'll see me pull it out of my bag and because I want to go after it and, and I want to lift heavyweight that day, although I would still recommend it to a client mm -hmm. that it's not something that you need to do unless you are in the sport of powerlifting and it allows you to wear a belt and it's then and then it's advantageous for you to use it and train with it so you get good at it otherwise for the general pop it really doesn't have a lot of value and if anything you have to be careful not to abuse it because then it could actually hurt you yeah 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 it, it definitely shifted for me i mean i was definitely wearing a belt and wrist wraps were something i used for for power cleans quite a bit when i was training in high school and then going into college um, but it, it was just one of those things. I, I, I had a moment there where I was trying to pick something up and I was doing some kind of like hard labor work as some kind of construction. And I was just like, I just had no strength even like holding this object for very long. And that really pissed me off. And I'm like, I was it's like a hammer, super dis yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's, Oh God, this hammer, this, hammer is so this Thor's hammer. <laughs> like, no, it's just a regular hammer. That's like, you know, <laughs> it's not even like one pound guy. Um, yeah. So like that pissed me off. And so hoagie. I was just like, I'm over it. I'm never using these again. I just, I don't I, I'm kind of like a, a hot and cold sort of personality when it comes to that stuff. Like yeah. It pisses me off enough to where nothing is going to be strapped, no belts. Like I'm going to work my way back from nothing. So I was, I just started with the basics of, yeah. of carrying heavy objects like farmer walks and um, just squatting, you know, beltless and to a point where I just, I, I'm comfortable now. Like I can lift the weight that I can lift. Uh, without any aids and that's where I'm at that's my real strength otherwise to me now of course on the other end of it I'm like yeah cool but can you lift it without all that shit yeah you know what's funny about that is that so people don't realize this but there's a skill to using a belt too it's not like you put it oh, on totally. and you automatically are stronger 
you have to learn how to fire your muscles in order to utilize a belt. And what's funny about that is like, I bet you if we put a belt on Justin now, he probably wouldn't be able to lift as well as he oh, does I'd have it. a hard time with it. Probably. Yes. Whereas now where me, I'm stuck in that loop or wearing a belt. I feel yeah. stronger. Now I did that with straps, with wrist straps. I took them off because I was, you know, doing judo or jujitsu and that's very grip heavy. And so I, I threw them away a long time ago and now I'm very comfortable. But the belt, man, I've got this weird relationship with the belt where it's like, you know, it's just this just, thing. It I, hugs you. Know, you. Oh, so I love it. You know, it's like a friend. But no, man, I tell you what, if you want to be strong in the real world, use none of them. If you just want to be strong in the gym, then 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 use them. And that's true. It's even true yeah. for me. So I'm, it's I'm, definitely not necessary. And that's the question, right? Not it's, at all. It's mm. beyond. It's beyond not necessary. But uh, I think we always have to clarify because I know every once in a while one of us posts a video and you see one of these tools. And yeah. they're like, hey, I thought Mind Pump doesn't advocate <laughs> for wrist straps or for belts. Yeah. It's like you're running. I what? mean, I've got both those in my bag. I absolutely use those a handful of times throughout the year. Um, I can't even tell you the last time either one of them been pulled out. You know, I've probably got a video on my Instagram the last time that I actually used it. It's just not a tool that I use. I want to be able to lift uh, and squat a good amount of weight without any sort of aids or tools. Uh, yes, do I pull it out when my when I'm flexing my ego or, hey, I want to push a number that I haven't seen in a yeah. long time and I know it'll help me do that? Yeah, it comes out. Yeah, you know, what's, what's really bad is you see like uh, people like at Home Depot or construction workers and they'll wear... Yeah, the belt. It's not like there. a weight belt, but it's similar, right? Where uh, it goes, yeah, and they have almost the shoulder straps that go with it and it's just holding them in place, what, really. Oh, that's terrible because it's it, you'll start to atrophy and lose strength because... Yeah. So wearing a weight belt when you lift, it's like a set, and then you take it off, right? These guys are wearing them all day all long. Day. Yeah, you start to you really change recruitment patterns. Well, that's what's after, wrong with that's what's atrophy. so dangerous about those corsets, the the and the, the screens, the screens oh, that yeah. people wear. I mean, they wear those all day long, and so you atrophy your core, which is arguably your, one of your most important muscles in your entire body. So silly just to shave a half of an inch off your waist. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Shrumpf eight thirty six. What is everyone's method for recovering faster from overtraining? Oh, I, I got this down to Ooh. a T for me. Uh, two things makes a huge difference. So if I feel like, uh, man, I, I'm going a little too hard. And typically I notice this because I feel it in my joints and I feel my performance start to decline. And so there's this, I, I'll do this, this two things and it makes a huge difference. One, the most important is I make sure I get a really good night of sleep that night. And what I mean by that is I, an hour or two before I want to be asleep, I wear blue light blocking glasses or I turn off electronics. I'll use some of our, our sponsors products like the, like the, you know, Ned, uh, mellow and maybe their sleep products, something like that to, you know, wind me down. I'll make sure the next day I don't have to wake up super early. That's number one. Here's number two. And this changed a lot for me through my lifting career. I used to think sitting down on the couch and relaxing all day would help me recover faster. It's it's actually it it, it didn't. In fact, what helped me recover faster was being active, mm -hmm. not not hard active, but like stretching, trigger sessions, doing mobility work. I mean, dramatically improved my recovery. I couldn't believe the difference. So it's like, oh, my legs are overtrained a little bit. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to stretch them do some body weight squats, some single leg toe touches, just kind of throughout the day, move them. And boy, did that make a difference in my recovery. So I, I have things that are like perfect world, money doesn't matter, have access to all these things, what do I do? And then I have like the big rocks, right? So like big rocks are hydration, sleep, high protein, uh, mobility, right? I can do all those things. I don't need any tools. I don't, does it cost me a lot of money to do that? I stay well fed, hit my protein and take what I'm supposed to drink a lot of water, get down and do some good mobility work to mobilize myself and then, and then get good rest. Like that is the fastest way to recover. Now there's a lot of cool tools out there and things that we have access to that I love to do in a perfect world. I get a deep tissue massage that night. I use the infrared uh, sauna yeah. and then the, all the other things that I talked about with uh, hydra hydration and making sure I'm getting enough nutrition. Like in the perfect world, I'm doing all of that. Like mm -hmm. I get the deep tissue massage, I mobilize, I infrared sauna. I also uh, get all my nutrition I need and hydrate and sleep. And then that's like the best recovery. Now, the real reality of it is not all, not all the time can I put string all those things together. But the first big blocks, it has to be getting, a, getting enough fluids 
staying mobile and active, which was a game changer for me because I thought the same way too as a kid. I used to hammer my body and think, I don't want to move anymore because I don't want to burn any more calories. I want all those calories to go to recovering and building muscle. That was my theory. And that's terrible. And being active and mobilizing mm-hmm. and being flexible and doing that, getting the joints moving through full range of motion after you've tightened everything down for an hour is one of the best things you can do to speed up recovery. So that is something that has changed over time. And then just making sure that you get you get your adequate protein and calorie intake after a hard training session. You just got to think that when you overreach like that, the body needs every bit of your macro targets and some on that time because you you are it's it's you've been hit harder and it has demand for more. So making sure that it's well fed after that. Yeah, just like you guys. I mean, it's really like sleep, sunlight, and light movement. And so you get a lot of that from like just going outside and um, like I'll go for like really light hikes or, or walks um, and kind of try and absorb as much of the sun as I can. Um, get in some mobility and, and express the joints that I know that um, I, I want to take them through full range of motion just so I can get more blood flow throughout my body. Um, but really, it's it, it really amounts to that. And, um, you know, trying to get slow my heart rate down, like after I've done a really hard, if I know I've had a really tough session, I'm like, oh my God, I think I mm-hmm. overdid it a bit. Like, uh, really try to get into that calm state as quick as I can. Like, even after that has has helped me to kind of rebound a bit faster as yeah, well. It, it's strange, right? It's the it's the movement paradox. Like, you think too much movement or too intense a movement, I overreached, my body's overtrained, it needs to heal. You would think no movement would allow that healing process to happen yeah. faster. But it's not true. Light movement. Now, there are cases where no movement's better. If you're really fucked, like if you really messed yourself up, yeah, you, you probably yeah, you, do want to you're sleep. Like borderline but, acute injury. Yeah, but you'd know, like you, you know, you would know that you wouldn't be able to do anything else. Otherwise, the, I, I remember specifically one time I worked out. This is when I was a kid, where I thought more was better, and I remember I worked out my legs so hard that the next day, this was over the summer, and what I used to do this right every summer, I was always like, I'm going to gain ten pounds by the time I go back to school. It's this thing, right? So I would hammer the shit out of myself. And I'll never forget, I, I did this with legs, and I woke up the next day, and I was so sore in my legs that it was hard to get out of bed, and I had to barely, and I'm like, but then that day, I actually had this girl I was going to meet up with, and you know, when you're a teenage boy, like, <laughs> Is this could, the same when you rode a bike, yeah, like, miles to, I, to go hang out with? All of them. I could have, <laughs> I could have missed, my legs could have fallen off, I would have found a way, right? Yeah. I'm going to go there. I'm going to yeah. meet up with this girl. So I'm like, oh man, I got to ride my bike. She lived like, you know, three miles away. I'm like, oh, this is going to be terrible. Whatever, it's a girl, so I'll do it. And I remember I got on the bike and about half a mile into the ride, my legs started feeling really good and I was riding. And I was starting to kind of piece this together a little bit like, huh, like, am I going to recover? And and then I thought I'm going to be even more sore tomorrow because I had to ride my bike so much. And I wasn't. The next day it was way better. That's when I first started kind of putting it together like oh i think movement and then when it really what really sealed the deal were the trigger sessions in maps anabolic when i started doing those trigger sessions i noticed that i would just recover like crazy and i would be able to add more volume to my hard workouts because i was doing uh trigger sessions on a regular basis so it's like this movement paradox like more movement actually facilitates recovery if you've done too much movement, which is you know pretty the strange. Right dose. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out all of our free guides and free giveaways. Again, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. When you're telling your body to do something, it understands movement, not necessarily connection to the muscles. And so to the point we were saying earlier, if you don't learn how to stabilize and connect, you're going to develop these compensatory systems where other muscles are doing more work. And then if you push past that and you keep working out, now you strengthen 